Let's explain active transport as a transport mechanism in a little bit more detail for you guys. So first of all, what is active transport? You learned about it in GCSE, so you should know a definition. Active transport is the movement of particles from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration. And I'm just underlining those key words, lower to higher, to remind you it's the opposite of, say, diffusion or osmosis. It's going from lower to higher. So that what we can say is it's movement against the concentration gradient rather than down the concentration gradient. Okay, so we kind of knew that at GCSE and at GCSE you will have looked at examples such as mineral ions moving into root hair cells against their concentration gradient. So from a lower concentration in the soil to a higher concentration inside the root hair cell itself. What else do we need to know about active transport though for A level? Well, because we're moving the particles against their concentration gradient, it requires energy from ATP. So the rate of active transport will be linked to the rate of respiration, which we'll come on to in a second. It also requires carrier proteins. Now, carrier proteins are intrinsic or integral proteins that are embedded in the cell surface membrane. And obviously they span both sides of the phospholipid bilayer. So they can be used to transport the particles across the membrane from one side to the other. Let's get a bit more in depth on this then. So how does this actually work and why is ATP required? So the way it works is you've got your carrier protein I'll kind of draw an example of one here. If you can imagine that's embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. So that's our carrier protein. They are specific to a particular molecule or a particular ion. The specific, let's say ion as an example, the specific ion will bind to the carrier protein. So it has a complementary shape and it will bind to a specific receptor site on the carrier protein. The other thing that will happen is a molecule of ATP will bind to the carrier protein and that ATP will be hydrolyzed to release energy. Now, obviously when we hydrolyze ATP, we get a DP or adenosine diphosphate and we get an inorganic phosphate. Now, when that hydrolysis takes place, that releases energy. And it's that energy which actually causes, I'll try and draw it over here. It causes the carrier protein to change shape. And when changing shape, it moves that ion from one side of the membrane to the other. But because it's moving against its concentration gradient, the carrier protein did need ATP to be hydrolyzed to provide the energy to cause that change in shape to move that ion from one side of the membrane to the other, for example, from outside of the cell to inside of the cell. And remember, active transport does only use carrier proteins. It's not like facilitated diffusion, which can also use a channel protein. Facilitated diffusion is also passive, don't forget. So that does not require energy from ATP. What else can we think about for active transport? Let's think about some of the factors that affect the rate of active transport that maybe we've not considered before. One of the ones we could say is it's affected by the number of carrier proteins. Because obviously if there are more of these carrier proteins embedded in the cell surface membrane, then more active transport can take place at one time. And in fact, active transport is often limited by the number of these carrier proteins because if they are all saturated or they're all in use, then the rate of active transport cannot speed up. So the number of car carrier proteins can be a limiting factor for active transport. You could also think about um, 
things like the number of mitochondria in the cell that's doing active transport or the rate of respiration. And the reason this one's important is we've just said that active transport requires ATP. Well, cells that have more mitochondria can do more aerobic respiration, make more ATP, and therefore they've got more energy available for active transport. Equally, if the rate of respiration is higher in the cell, the cell is making more ATP, it can do more active transport. Um, so I guess you could also, I'm just thinking of other things, you could also talk about temperature. Now we know that if temperature is increased, the particles have more kinetic energy, they'll move faster, therefore active transport can take place more quickly, but temperature also increases the rate of respiration. And if we increase the rate of respiration and have more ATP produced, that would increase the rate of active transport. But be careful because if the temperature gets too high, you could potentially denature these carrier proteins and then active transport would stop. So just a little bit of extra there to help you maybe understand this topic a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, make sure you check out my other videos. We've done a video on osmosis as well. Um, I've also done a video on the required practical for osmosis with potatoes. And if you go back, you'll find videos on facilitated diffusion and diffusion as well. So I hope you found this useful.